What's going on Nitro gang? Welcome to Friday Night Nitro. Now today is not just any other regular episode. Of course, no episode is ever really regular unless you are watching fake reality television. Here, nothing is scripted. All my jokes are real and all the Nitros are even realer. You're looking at the original Traxa Slayer Pro 4x4. And it's also the Nitro Gang birthday. So let me wait a little while till you guys show up here in the stream. And we will install what I like to think is probably the best engine option for this truck right now for the money. We're getting up there in the views. Let me say hello to everyone that is here. You're looking at a Dynamite. 19. Now I'm not 100% sure this is going to go in the truck. I like to keep everything fresh and suspenseful. Just like the US political system. When they give you two candidates to choose from, you just never know which turd you're going to be stuck with. You know what I'm saying? We got Rooster, how you doing? We got my friend Mark Messenger here in the stream. Happy to see you here. Benjamin Martinez is here. I'm gonna hang out with him later on this weekend. For a little special surprise. We got Tara Curry here in the stream. Nitro Gang Queen Melissa is here. We got Flaming Seagull. How are you doing my dude? He goes. Let me read this comment for everyone here. We got Jeremy Stone. Stone FPV. Uh, Stone FPV rather. Alright. Johnny from Brooklyn. Yo Johnny from Brooklyn. Is there any traffic on the Belt Parkway right now? Just let us know. If there's traffic on Belt Parkway. I'll wait for my Nitro deal for tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? But uh. No, for real, is there traffic on the Belt Parkway right now? Well, you, you never know. Okay, well, we got a good question here from Flamey Seagull. He goes, this was my second RC car ever. I have, I still have it. Just gave it to my nephew after doing the tracks to send in your old motor and get a new 3.3. Yes, I am happy you mentioned that because that is another option. Um, we'll talk about the Traxxas trade-in program later on. I'm sure most people here are aware of it. It's not your first time, but... It's always good to uh, discuss things as they actually are. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, we got Sid Marmichi here. How you doing from the Netherlands? One big grease monkey is here with us again. All right. Rust Belt RC over from Cleveland. Now, guys, if you look at my username, what's going on there? Pitbull Air Cooled. It goes, happy birthday, Hyper. Yeah, thank you, man. You know, I'm not much of a birthday guy, but if, uh, if it's my birthday and I can talk about a Nitro, I'm happy. So that's kind of like what, what's going on today. So, Traxxas Slayer. You guys have seen this on this channel previously, probably a while back. If you take a look at this chassis, this is actually, I called it a vintage Slayer. Now I know you're all thinking, you're like probably hybrid, man. Where'd you get that cool blue shirt you're wearing, right? And I can tell you where I got the cool blue shirt. And the answer is easy. Costco, okay? But you know what you cannot get at Costco? You cannot get a Slayer because these are, these are gone, all right? But we got one. Okay, let me say hello to everyone here, then we'll uh, continue discussing this. And uh, I actually have a lot of work to do, so I'm going to have to get ready to do the work, you know? But for real, like, this shirt is from Costco, okay? In case you all were wondering. It's a pack of two for ten. Really cheap, you know? I like to spend money on engines and nitros, not not shirts, all right? What do I look like? Uh, J-Lo J over here? I'm not J-Lo. All right, we got... Uh, Twisted RC, how you doing, my dude? JR Motos and RC Hobby. Uh, thank you, man. I565, how you doing, dude? So, for those of you that might not know, today is 322. Now, the channel name is 324, right? It starts with 324. That's my birthday, March 24. What's up there, K24 Steve? A sickening vintage Traxxas historian is here with us, guys. I would bow down, but if I bow down, I'm going to hit my head on the Slayer, so I can't do it, you know, but I'll do it metaphorically. Uh, how you doing there, Dodger boy? Happy to see you here, man. Now, well, uh, the thing is on Sunday, I have plans. I don't think I can do any videos on Sunday, so I'm going to uh, have the Nitro Gang festivities for myself and K24 Steve over here today, all right? So, you guys, thank you for stopping by. Like I said, I'm not much of a birthday person, of course, if I... Uh, if somebody wants to take me out to like a nice hibachi restaurant or something like that, you know, I, I won't say no. You know, you want to go hibachi? I, lo I love hibachi. Hibachi is my favorite, man. I love Japanese food. It's all about the Japanese food. Of course, Mediterranean is good too. Of course, a juicy burger is good too. Okay, we're going to continue, guys. Okay, Monty Kruska Jr., how are you, man? So, now, 
You guys have seen this Slayer on the channel before. Before we continue, let me just do a little bit of uh, history on this truck. We'll talk about what it is because yes, the Slayer, I don't know, can you consider it a vintage Nitro or can you not? Um, it depends in my opinion, it depends. This particular model, when I take the body off, you guys will see, it's a little bit unique compared to the current Slayers out there right now. Mainly the fact that this is the first generation short chassis model. What's up Nitro and Electrics RC, thank you man. Um, happy to see you here today, end of the week everybody. Let's stay positive, let's stay real, let's not lie about the RCs we want to get to our wives and girlfriends. Okay, because I know, I know that could be a problem, but if you need an alibi, guys, I'm telling you right now, like if you need an alibi, just be like, hey man, um, you know, this RC, like hybrid sold it to me, cause like, you know, he had too many, he sold me, he gave me a really good deal, I had to buy it. Like for real, if you want to go tell your wives or girlfriends or whoever, um, an explanation of where you got your next RC from, get, tell them to give me a call, I'll, 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 I'll be with them, you know, I'll, I'll be real, I'll be like, you know, yeah, you know, I just didn't want to do videos on this RC anymore. Uh, I sold it to my, uh, to, to you know, to your uh, significant other here today. I gave him a really good deal, basically my cost, okay? And then we'll all be happy, everybody. We'll all be happy, all right? We got All Aspects RC. What's up, my dude? We got RC A&E here with us. All right, awesome. So let me take the body off. I'll show you guys uh, this truck. Now, um, for real, if you, if you need, like, an RC alibi story, I'll hook you up with an alibi story. It's free. No, no charge. I'm, I'm serious right now, okay? Do you guys know how many times I told Melissa RC alibi stories? Except in my case, they're all true! Alright? They're all true! Alright, let's, uh, let's take it off, okay? There we go. Alright, so this particular truck, uh, as I said, you guys have seen it prior on this channel. This one is pretty famous for being the very first short chassis. Now the way Traxxas does it, and it's a little confusing to be honest with you, I would really have rather they called things like XL or something like that, kind of like the Savage does it, or the Low C LST XXL. This is the short chassis model. Now, how do you know it's a short chassis? Well, don't really know, unless you uh, notice the fact that it's a silver chassis. Now I've showed this one before, so you know if you've seen it, you know don't don't try to like kick my ass over it, nothing like that. You know you understand. Uh, making a nitro great again in restoration take take a very long time now. For a while, I wasn't completely sure what I would do with this truck. As you could see, it is it is missing a lot. It is missing a lot. Mainly, I'll show you guys the parts of the original engine, and I really had to kind of uh, decide what I was going to do. Whether I should have traded in for a uh, a new 3.3 or kind of go the way that I think most people will eventually go, and that is uh, to get the Dynamite 19, I think. Uh, these engines are basically still pretty inexpensive. They're in stock right now. I put a link to this in the description of this video. They're like $124 uh, at A-Main. If you want to get one, get one. It comes with a new um, header-style spring system. That's also kind of a, a massive, massive uh, innovation, I would say. You know, one of the big problems on the Revo, and I've experienced it firsthand, guys, on the Revo, what happens... On these, well, this is a Slayer, but it's basically the same layout, right? On the Revo, what happens is if you mount your body very, very close, well, right now you're missing the header. The header's not here, right? But if you mount your body kind of close to the to the header and you take a jump and it lands in such a way that usually one out of four times it will break your header, right? What's going on there? No music RC. How you doing? He goes, it's PB and J time. You know, I think I think I've become allergic to peanut butter and jelly. Like a while ago, I used to take these uh, sandwiches to work called, you guys might know them, it's like a mix, it's called Uncrustables. It's kind of like bread sandwiched together with, um, you know, peanut butter and jelly. I think one of them was so bad, uh, I got like food poisoning. Now I can't eat it anymore, you know? H humanity, you get food poisoning and die, then you can't eat peanut butter and jelly anymore. It's sickening. Okay, so the Traxxas Slayer, who wants to guess what year this model was released? Keep in mind, it's really not that different from a modern Slayer which as of checking last on A-Main and on Tower and pretty much everywhere, they're sold out completely. Okay, we got RC Adventures here in the stream. How you doing, my dude? Uh, A.S. Racing, thank you for that channel donation. Let me read what you just said. He goes, just picked up a Kyosho MP10 RTR. How is the KE21 SP? Okay, so 
Dude, that is a really reliable engine. Uh, those Kyosho engines are super reliable. I wouldn't say they're the ultimate in RPM, but they are very, very reliable. They start up easy. The mechanisms are, are pretty good, right? Uh, I've driven them several times myself. The Kyosho Nitros are very, very good. Um, I, I think I think any, anybody will probably say that. There's probably nothing really bad about them. Of course, it's not like a, a top race brand, but you know, it's it's very good for, for the price. And those engines are pretty easy to start. They hold a tune, they have good carbs, and um, they have adequate power for, for what I would why what I, what I would think, you know. Okay, so thank you for that, man. All right, let's see what we got. Geo Mac goes 2009. So after doing some preliminary RC research, 2008. You know, I was actually a little bit surprised because I thought this was 2006. Anybody want to take a guess why I thought it was 2006? I'm actually a little bit surprised. Oh, thank you for that from Pitbull Air Cooled, a channel donation. Uh, we will be buying some birthday-related items with that. And if I'm lucky, a Nitro Gang deal this weekend, okay? Nitro Gang deals might be going down. So this one is missing servos. I think out of everything, I don't have the servos. So in a couple of minutes, I'll show you the rest of the parts, things I have for this truck. It's actually quite, quite, um, it's going to get hairy, guys. Um, I had to really think about today's topic um, a while. Because really, this is going to get hairy, you know. Uh, we got, hey, YRC, what's up, man? How are you? Happy to see you here. He goes, because of the body. I forgot what I said about the body, but I'm sure you are correct. And if it didn't make any sense what I said, you, you could correct me. Sometimes I'm wrong. It's fine, you know. You know, there's some people that, like, never, never want to be corrected. I'm not one of those people. Bro, correct me all day long, okay? Correct me, and I'll eat a can of tuna if you want, you got Okay, no music, RC, bro. Thank you for that. He goes, I had to beat ASR Racing. <laughs> you beat him. You beat him. Now imagine if both of you race your RCs together. What's going to happen? I'm going to have a great video is what's going to happen, man. I'm going to have a great video. Now, I do want to say K24 Steve earlier did mention a comment about how this is unique. It does have narrower suspension arms and a, and a shorter chassis, obviously. So we'll get down to business. I'm just waiting a little while for some viewers here to come into the stream. That was just the body falling, no big deal, guys. No, no, no excitement here. Okay, we got my friend Eugene Pony here in the stream. How you doing? He goes, yo, my friend from Jacksonville, Florida. How's it going over there? You doing okay in uh, Jacksonville, Florida? You know, I've never been to Florida. I gotta go travel one day, you know? The problem is, I'm like, I don't really get that many days off of my job, so it's pretty bad, you know? Unfortunately, in this country, in order to have health insurance, you gotta go to your office job every day. So, you know, this is sickening, you know? All right, so I have, if you guys want to take a look at the original engine from this truck, we can maybe make a decision on it, but I'm going to say it's probably trashed, all right? I've um, put it all together in a bag. Uh, usually some of these parts are salvageable. I might send this in for another 3.3, but to be honest with you, uh, Traxxas charges, I think like what, 110 or 120 now for a new 3.3. You might be better off just getting the Dynamite 19. Now, there is a good debate on whether these engines are more powerful than the 3.3. And I will say they're not more powerful. Okay, so we can talk about it here in the stream, guys. Um, I don't think they are more powerful. But they have very good carbs. They look good and they run They run very, very cool. But in terms of power, I would not... And I've, I've ran many of these over the years, right? And I've had many friends of mine that own these over the years and I've speed tested RCs with these Dynamite 19 engines, I would not say they are more powerful than the 3.3. Um, now, Jared Smithers goes, the 3.3 makes more power with the OS carb. That is totally the 100% truth, my dude. If you can get the 3.3 with the OS carb, which of course they're like $80 to $90, then that would be ideal. Uh, but of course, if your 3.3 is dead, well then good luck anyway. You know, that's not going to happen, all right? Let me see, we got a question from JR Motors. RC and Hobbies, let me read this comment. He goes, question, when putting the sleeve back in the engine, should the piston be at the top or bottom dead center? Okay, so, so the question is, when putting the sleeve back in, okay, so I see what you're saying. It's always helpful, so basically you have the sleeve in your fingers. I'll show you what, maybe a little bit right now if I can, okay? So it's gonna be much easier to slide the sleeve in with the piston um, at the bottom and then kind of jiggle the crankshaft. What the hell is this? The crankshaft is sticking the other direction. I forgot how to, uh, 
All right, this engine's dead, guys. Okay, this engine's dead. So don't don't worry about it. You're not. There's not going to be any tears here. Why is the collet still still on this? What the hell happened? Oh, the bearing is missing too. I don't. I never. In my opinion, it's always easier. Well, so this is what actually happened to that that particular 3.3 engine. Typical connecting rod failure. Also, piston uh, is missing a giant chunk over here. So it's basically how this one killed itself, right? It also looks like some prior owner tried to pry it from the top, okay? Um, really, all that matters is make sure when you have your piston back in, right? Uh, this is like a typical mistake people make. What's going on there, Oscar Oquendo? Happy to see you here, man. Uh, it's a uh, Friday, Nitro Gang birthday. I know you're out there with uh, our friend Shane Rosari, who's been on this channel numerous times. You guys were burning some nitro, okay? The other day I was actually uh, hanging out with my uh, RC buddies and, you know, Oscar Quendo sent me a picture, so I called him up. We had a little nitro game conversation. It was a good day, it was a good day, okay? So, most important thing when you're putting the piston back in, this is the skirt. The skirt is like the, the cutout, the opening right, right there, right? You could see the skirt, not this part, this part's detonated. Make sure the skirt is facing the exhaust port, right? Exhaust port. Make sure it's not facing the front of the engine, which is where the carb is. Most important thing you could do, man. Most important thing. Uh, the rest of the thing, as long as you get the sleeve in, it's okay. For me, I honestly like to have the piston at the bottom, put the sleeve like halfway through the top, and then kind of move the crankshaft until the piston will slide in a little bit through the sleeve. Always helps to have a little bit of uh, three-in-one oil there on the bottom of the sleeve. Always great. Grateful dabs. What's up, man? And Australiano RC goes. Nitro conversations are always good. I want you guys to know, you know, there's like usually a lot of people in the stream. I try to entertain all of your comments with the good questions as much as possible. Of course, I also have to do uh, the topic of the channel today, right? So don't feel like I'm uh, leaving you out. You know, I've been to some other channel streams uh, past couple months. It's as if they don't know there's a chat going on. It's like, who are you doing the who are you doing who are you doing the stream for? Yourself? No, 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 not not really. Okay, all right. We're gonna continue, my guys. Uh, thank you for showing up here to Nitro Gang stream. Grateful dabs, go spit on it. I would, but I think a troll might take that out of context and use it against me. You know, the world we live in today, you gotta be, be careful who you spit on. You know, I don't spit on anybody, but if you do, they're gonna take it out of uh, they're gonna take take it out of context. All right, so you gotta you gotta take take it easy, my guys. All right, let's get down to the engine. I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the situation with this particular one. I have cleaned the chassis fairly well, so you'll have a good idea of what we are working with. This one is fairly well stripped down. This one also has, I'm going to show you a top-down view in a little bit, guys. Um, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's go down to the engine, it's, uh, the truck itself. And we'll talk about what makes this particular one uh, a unique truck. Now, I know earlier I asked what year this was released, and it was actually 2008. You know, to be honest with you, I thought it was 2006. When I did my research, I was a little bit surprised. Now, the reason I thought it was 2006 is because, if you guys might remember, there was a special short chassis model of the T-Max in 2006. Right, 2006 was kind of like the mover and the shaker of the of uh, of, I would say nitros. So the short chassis T Max with the 3.3 was out. Now what else was out in 2006 that was unique? I would say, uh, the short chassis 3.3 T Max did not last long. It was the one with the Opti drive, so pretty rare. If you're able to get them, I actually kind of like them. They are very good at wheelies. So let's take a look now at this particular one. This one has. The really rare, highly sought after sway bars, front and in the rear. So we'd still have our factory electric start system. The spur gear looks to be in normal condition. The clut, the, uh, what is this called? The slipper pads look to be in good condition as well. We're missing the servo. I should have all of these parts. So let's take a look at, well, it's hard to say, but I have like bags all over the place. Let me get one of the bags out here. So the, this is the original engine, just so 
We could uh, examine it, you know, kind of understand the decision-making process. The original block. What's up there? We got, oh, I already said hello to Nitro or Electrox RC. How you doing? All right, so this is the original engine from this. Why do, why do I have the crankshaft on this side? I mean, the, the collet on this side. It doesn't make no sense. All right. The block looks okay. I don't see anything obviously wrong with the block. Front uh, bearing looks okay. The inside is missing the bearing. Probably that bearing probably destroyed itself. That's probably why it's missing. All right, so for now, we're going to uh, just leave it like so. This original engine from this truck. Let's take a look at the rest of the components. It's always good to see the condition of the rest. The cooling head looks to be okay. Don't particularly know where these are. Uh, see, what are those called? Uh, uh, the gaskets are. But the head looks normal. Nothing crazy with the head. Now, what about the back plate? The back plate looks okay. I like to keep these parts for like future reference. I've actually, believe it or not, had multiple um, back plates just destroy themselves. I also do like the fact that Traxxas uses a proper giant O-ring. Head chimps, that's right, Nitro RC and Electrus head chimps. I do love the fact that they use a proper O-ring instead of the paper gasket. This O-ring almost never leaks from, from my experience. Now, we're down to the piston and sleeve. The piston and sleeve, my dudes. So my understanding is this is the original piston and sleeve from this truck. What's up, Polar Paw Customs? How you doing? Oh, man, Polar Paw Customs with a great message here. He goes, what up, Hybrid? Just got an XTM X Factor. Well, my dude, you have joined the club of extraordinary gentlemen. Just like that movie, okay? Maybe one day I will be happy to sit right alongside that club table with you, man. Until then, you are the VP, okay? So, yeah, pretty typical. I actually have, I think, about two different Traxxas engines I'm working on right now with the same exact piston killing. Um, but here we also have the connecting rod failure, all right? Our Archie, what's up, man? Happy to have you here, man. Long weekend. You know, he goes digging people out of snow. Man, you had some snow over there, right? All right, so that engine is dead. It's it's pretty much beyond repair. Um, the only thing you can do with an engine like that is send it in for a replacement. But, you know, you're going to have to pay a lot of money. So this is the Dynamite 19. I'm sure most of you people have seen it before. Uh, the good thing about this particular engine, it's a direct fit to any Traxxas vehicle. That is why people wind up getting these engines, right? I do like the way they look also. We have a nice black case. It looks like this one. Now, this one was actually used. I did not get this one brand new. This one was used. I don't know who did this. This might have been installed in a Revo. I know usually when you install um, like an OS 21 TM in, into a Revo, you need a different throttle, uh, what is it, Thro throttle arm. Right, uh, particular unique throttle arm. So hopefully this one will fit. I mean, it looks like someone just shaved it down there, right? But the engine should be fine. We'll just have to reinstall everything normally. Let's check out what it looks like from the back there. What's up there, Mighty Mike, man? Happy for that, man. So for those of you uh, just coming in, now today isn't really my birthday, but I don't think I'll be able to do videos this weekend. We're supposed to have bad weather tomorrow. I'm going out. I got to spend time with a fam. With the, with the wife, with the whoever, you know what I mean? So, um, guys, today I'm kind of dedicating this to be my birthday stream, if, if possible. So, you know, if something pops up, something pops up. But if it doesn't, then nothing pops up, you know? So, we're going to try to install this one. Hopefully it fits, but, like, somebody has really trimmed this to a degree that makes it really, really angry. Well, makes me angry, rather, right? Okay, well, what else do we have? We have the original pipe for this truck. This is the Traxxas, uh, you know, resonator pipe. Pretty good. Nice to see that it actually came with this right here. Scott L, thank you, man. I appreciate that. All right, so let's get down to business. Um, in terms of options, I'm going to ask you all a, a question right now. Okay, I'm going to ask you all a question. Jack Carroll goes get a $20 burger. You know what I would? But then I would like you know, be upset after because I, I could have bought, you know, $20 worth of nitro, you know. I'm going to ask you all a question, though. It's a serious question. It has to do with uh, start systems. So 
So on one hand, we have a pull starter. On the other hand, MixRC, what's up, man? Happy to see you here. On the other hand, we have what I'm assuming to be the, the original easy start for this truck. Uh, Geomac, thank you, bro. Yeah, it's a little bit. I'm not really a birthday person, but, you know, like, people like birthdays. And, you know, to be honest with you, people always ask me, what the hell do the numbers mean in your channel? So, 324 is, is my date of birth, right? But 94 is not. I'm not from 1994. I'm older than that. You know, so, you guys must think I'm like, what? what hold on. What would I be if I was on 1994? I'd be 33. No, hold on. I'd be 30. What the hell am I talking about? I'm, I'm not 30, okay? I'm older. I'm older than 30. Not 30. So... What are we going to do? Electric start. I mean, the wiring harness looks okay on this truck. I'm thinking maybe go with the electric start. What's up, Corey? How you doing, man? He goes, happy birthday. Mine is next Friday. Congratulations to the Aries gang. You know, the Aries gang. So, what do you guys think? Uh, personally, I like the post starter, but part of me wants to keep this truck original. And I'm thinking probably electric start. I'm going to let the ultimate... Traxxas Slayer fan here, and I think there's a couple of you guys here, but there's only one that comes to mind. We're going to ask Tara Curry. What does Tara Curry want to see? The full starter or the original Traxxas Easy Start? We're going to ask. And we're going to wait. Yeah, this system is actually quite reliable. Um... Yeah, Mighty Mike goes, electric start. Most people are saying easy start right now, so I'm going to take the next two out of three, and we will uh, see. Okay, Terra Curry goes the original. Okay, so we got one vote. Electric start from James Simroth and Geomac, easy start. So all of you guys have voted easy start. That works for me, man. That works for me. All right. Uh, I, I do want to tell you, I have no idea if it actually works, but well, let's hope it does. All right, guys, uh, I got a question for you, though. I'm thinking, should I print like a mini catapult on my printer right now? So last night, I printed a mini catapult. I'm not joking around. It actually printed out on the printer a mini catapult. I could do it, and I will launch the bad piston somewhere far away. Okay, but it's going to take a little while. Uh, Melissa, bring down the mini catapult. I'll try to build it later. All right, let's get down to Slayer business. I have to assemble... Um, the mounting, everything, basically this, this truck is like in pieces. So thank you all for stopping by once again. Cash Murray goes to post art. Let's wait. Uh, it's okay, man. You know, the good thing is I'll use that post art somewhere else. All right. So it's okay. We got, uh, HPI Savage, I think here. Oh, sickening channel donation from Tara Curry. I super appreciate that, bro. We're going to put that towards good use this weekend, man. Uh, probably some sickening nitro deals going down. Okay. Melissa's going to bring me down something. Uh, Melissa, bring me down whatever we're, I asked you for. You know, it would be great, Melissa. I know you have two hands. I don't want to be rude or nothing. I, I know you have two hands. And I know one of your hands is, is not busy right now. And it, it's not holding coffee. I'm just, I'm ju I'm just going to say so. Say it. Okay, it's okay. You can give it to me. All right. All right, guys. I printed a freaking catapult. You thought I was kidding, huh? I wasn't kidding, my dudes. Thank you, Jason McCall, for the happy birthday. Sickening deal. All right. All right, Melissa, if, you, if you're not busy or whatever, if your hand is still free, bring down bring down a, uh, a, uh, my coffee. I forgot the coffee. You know, I was a little tired after today. Um, basically, I was on the bus the other day. Uh, bus broke down. Had to get off. Had to wait for another one. It was sickening. So, mini catapult, guys. What do you think? Should we print it? I'm going to... I mean, it's already printed. So this actually has the, the, the springs already attached. I just got to find the file that tells me how to, how to assemble it. And we could assemble it or just go directly to, to the chassis. I don't know. It's up to you. I mean, I, I'm good. You know, I had half a cup of coffee, bro. So All right, let, me, let, me, let me see. But this actually is a fully 3D printed catapult. How long is that microwave that you need? Um, we don't need microwave on the coffee. Just bring down the coffee. Okay. Yeah. It's a nitro coffee. So it's, it's going to be hot. Let me see how to print this, uh, how to assemble it. There's like a video on the assembly. All right. I know what goes first. I 
All right, hold on. Gotta have a little coffee. I'm thirsty. What's up, guys? You should see my hands. All right, I gotta watch this YouTube video on how to assemble it, and uh, we could assemble it. But yeah, this 3D printed on its own, you know. Let's get down to business, everybody. Got 105 viewers here. Thank you for that. I appreciate you all. I'm going to watch this YouTube video and we'll, we'll take this apart. Let me just get the engine parts out of here. What's up there, Tom? All right, hold on, hold on. You know what's going to be satisfying? is breaking these things apart. So how about this? Yeah, so this is a fully 3D printed part right here. It's pretty nice, right? It says catapult. Look at the parts quality. These, This is all the same material. We'll see if these springs actually do anything. Pretty dope, no? Okay. So let's let's break this all out. You could, you could basically print like models, like kit cars or whatever the hell you want. Oh my God, Justin just released a sickening file for these. Man, thank you for making STL files for all of us. How the hell you break this? Um, I'm going to need Melissa to bring me pliers. Melissa, can you bring me those snips, please? I need those snips from upstairs. But for real, look at the parts quality. So this thing uses a textured bed. That's why you see this texture a little bit on there. Melissa, please, I need those snips. The, the, the cutting snips. I can't, I can't do this. All right, let's break this apart. Whoa. Yeah, you could basically print, like, anything you want. Ugh. Damn, I need the snips. Melissa, let's go. We're losing viewers. I'm coming. She's a daughter of that this before. All right. So we'll clean this up as soon as I cut it. Yeah, this is like to me a part. So you could actually print um, literally anything you want, you know. I'm going to clean this up a little bit in a, in a few minutes. Let me just cut the main parts over here. So we got this. We'll cut. All right, we got this out. Let me cut the rest out and see what what uh what we're gonna do. Sickening. It'll be smarter if I cut from the bottom. That will be smarter. So I'm going to uh trim the pe the excess off, obviously. Yeah, this print took about two and a half hours to print, but, you know, I don't have the, the fastest printer. So, let's see what we got. I'm going to trim these parts. All right. Solid, right? Look at that part. It's not bad at all. I'm going to put them here on the Slayer for now. Let's continue trimming. These are the springs. All right, spring. Let's see if it actually has springy action. Yeah, it does. It does actually spring. This one has only a couple small issues here. All right, so there's a hinge already 3D printed in here. 
All right, pretty, pretty great tolerance, I gotta say. Pretty great tolerance on this. All right. sickening I mean this is probably how they're going to be doing 3d printed body part organs soon like you know like heart valve stuff like that except with different types of plastics yeah this technology is going to go well it's skyrocketing right now I would say in terms of uh, usability and these are pretty pretty durable parts from what they look like to me I think I got distracted with this. Alright guys, I promise after this we'll do the Slayer. Okay, sorry, sorry for that guys. I got I got distracted for some reason. My bad about that. Okay, right, so we got some of the parts. Let me watch this video and we'll build it. Alright, so you gotta take the catapult part. And it looks like you put the spring on it. I'm not particularly sure which direction. Looks like they're doing it this direction with a spring. Hmm. It's so these parts are made to slide on. Let's see. Do they need to be cleaned or something? All right. So it slid on. I'm not sure how far it's supposed to slide on. Let me watch this video. All right. I see it now. Okay, so it's supposed to slide on and th this part's supposed to interlock. All right, so it goes on like this. This part locks and it's created a spring a little bit. Yeah, we might mount this catapult to the car. All right, it slid on. Boom. So it needs to be solid like that. All right, all right, let's get this one on. I put this one in incorrectly, of course. Lucas Talka, bro, it's okay, you could, uh, you could renew. You know what, I uh, printed this one too crazy. What's up, John Goodwin, happy to see you here, man. Yeah, uh, printed this one too strong. Let me get this. The, this one needs to get slid out a little bit. It's too. It's on there incorrectly. Ugh. All right, Houston, we might have a problem. I slid it on. What's up there, Keith Tolhurst? I was just chit chatting with T Keith Tolhurst the other day. He told me he got a bunch of uh, glow glow plugs, a brand I've never heard, but they look pretty good. Damn, I think we're going to have to reprint this. I've slid this on so crazy that I can't get it to actually work anymore. But the spring works. Look at the spring so far. Right? It does actually work. Let me get this piece out. I put it on incorrectly. Thing is, I need a nitro assistant. That's what I need. Okay. I got it off. I got it off, guys. Three minutes. Okay, hold on. Yeah. I fly goes. We want crazy subway stories. You want a crazy subway story? I got I got a little bit of a subway story. I wouldn't say it's totally crazy. Um, but I'm on the subway, right? This this guy just keeps asking me, is this train going downtown? Is it going downtown? I go, I go to him, yeah, it's going downtown, you know? And uh then he goes up to the woman next to me, goes, asks, asks, sir, is this train going downtown? I think he had like some kind of, I don't, I don't even know what, what it was. Guy just kept asking the same question to everybody. All right. It's sliding in. All right. There we go. It's in. All right. The springs are in. Anybody here watch Hercules? Dude, th this is actually a functional part right here. 
All right, so the spring works. Let me see the next step. And we'll do a little catapult test, and we'll, I, I promise we'll get back to the slayer, okay? So I don't know why I got distracted over here. All right, let me see the next part. All right, so the springs are in. We have a couple more parts. What's next? Okay, the next part is, is this. What's up, Lotus 420? Yeah, this is actually quite springy. I'm surprised because this is the world's cheapest material, too. This is not even, like, really flexible material, but it, it, it seems to be okay. So with this pointing up, I'm looking at, at, at basically the way this should be in the video right now. This pointing towards this direction. It locks in. Okay, I think this way. That must be the, the side. Okay, then that means this one. Locks in this direction. Man, the fit and finish is better than a, than a, than an Audi. Sickening fit and finish. Okay, hold on. I missed. I missed one part. Okay, that means on top over here. This part. Where does this go? Don't know where this goes. Okay, so this would go. Where does this part go? Okay, so it looks like this would separate the top. This would be holding it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Ah, man. It's a pretty positive engagement right there. I think this is how this part would go. What about the bottom? So it looks like the bottom would be in this position. Yeah. Okay, so here's the base. Let's see, guys. We're going to assemble this and we're done. So this is the base. I might have printed it too, too crazy. Unless I'm doing it incorrectly. Now this has to be correct. All right, let me just bang it in there off camera and then I'll, uh, I'll assemble it, all right? Okay, we got one in. I think these parts need to be sanded a little bit. Oh, I see. Let me just snip it a little bit. Oh, we got a sickening. Channel donation for my birthday here from Hoser1. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Um, wasn't keeping track of the comments, but I should have been. Thank you, man. I'm building a catapult, okay? And then I, pro I promise we're going to get to the Slayer, man. Uh, I got distracted with catapults for some reason. Sickening. Okay, A2RC, what's up, bro? Happy to see you here. I'm building a catapult. We're going to launch something. I'm going to trim some of the parts here a little bit. All right, let me try to install this. Damn it. I want to launch the piston. That's what I want to do. All right, it looks like it's going in. This is the base. Ugh! Damn, this is tough. It's not going in yet. Doesn't want to go in. It's almost in. Ah, 
Oh, I think we're getting it. Okay. Well, all right, I got some of it in. The rest is tough. It doesn't matter. It'll still work, guys. Well, Keith Tall Horse Band, thank you for a channel donation. I got some of it. I can't get the bottom to lock in. All right, whatever. This is going to be good enough, guys. Thank you for that. Should we launch something? Look at a catapult. Self-powered. Oh, we got Chain Nitro in my veins. A good channel friend of mine. I know he was hanging out with Oscar Quanda. I told him when it's warmer, we're going to go and do that. But yeah. 3D print. I just can't get the legs into the base for some reason. I gotta like squeeze it in much harder. Damn it. It's the only thing I'm not fully done with. I'm about to like break my arm over here. Okay, doesn't matter. All right, we're gonna learn something, guys, or what? All right. All right. Sorry for that, my. I don't know, I got distracted. All right, check out check out the little mini catapult, everybody. 3D printed from a, from a card you saw. I just can't get it. I'm going to remove this later and like sand it a little bit. Can't get it in for some reason. It's sickening. Okay, check this out. Catapult. Spring loaded. Self literally on its own. Yeah, springs right there. All right, what are we going to launch? I need to launch something that I, we don't break nothing. I got the perfect idea. The Traxxas carb. Although the carb is a little big, but it'll, 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 it'll work. All right, guys. We're going to launch a Traxxas carb or what? We could do it. RC Nitro Flux, what's up, bro? All right, he he is the one that started me on the 3D printer craze. But guys, RC Nitro Flux over here, go to his channel. He 3D printed an entire RC out of parts. Okay, sickity guy, guy, super creative guy over there. Super creative. Uh... Rooster, how you doing? It goes grapes. No, I'm sorry, bro. The grapes haven't grown yet. You're gonna have to give me like four months. When you come back in three months or four months, we'll have grapes. I'll be beating their asses up outside, okay? Oh, sorry. A2RC goes launch an old glow plug. The thing is, I'm never gonna find it again. So, you know what? This is not a bad carb, actually. All right, we're gonna try it. What's up, Michael Norris? All right. Get ready to launch stuff. I'm gonna give you a, uh, a nice view. Are you right, guys? We need like a draw, like something that could draw, like the the thing, and just release it. All right, we got the carb. Are you ready? We're gonna launch the carb. One. Nitro electric RC, bro. See you in a little bit. One. What's up, KGM, bro? I saw you were doing a live stream, man. I'm sorry I couldn't join. It's you know I had big plans today. I just built a catapult. We're launching a Traxxas carb for everybody that just joins up. We're gonna launch it right now. It worked. It worked. We're going to do it again. I mean, we're literally just using the built-in spring. It's actually a pretty dope design right here. All right. Traxxas Carb. KGM, thank you, man. Well, my birthday is actually Sunday, but I don't think I'll be able to do a stream on Sunday. It's I got family plans. You know, you know how it is. You try to do streams when, like, uh, the family wants to do stuff, they, they laugh at you. Okay, we got a 3D printed catapult though. Launching a Traxxas carp. Boom, success. Dude, that went like four feet. I'm gonna fix this and we're gonna get a sickening catapult. I'm, I'm gonna bring this to work. I'm gonna launch Cocoa Puffs during, at people during lunchtime. Kidding around. Okay, anyways, let's, uh, let's go back to the Slayer, guys. Okay, en enough fun, enough fun, okay? Uh, I think that was a waste of time, but it doesn't matter. All right, thank you for that. KGM, I'm going to go back to your stream later. Make sure I watch a portion of it. But we are we are deep in Slayer action right now. Okay, thank you for uh, all the channel donations, guys. I appreciate that. Consider it a birthday gift to the Nitro gang. All right. So first thing, we need to get the engine mounted. Um, pit Blacker Glows, you should print a trebuchet. You know what? You have given me a great idea. I'm going to go to the website right now. 
I'm going to look for a trebuchet. Let's hope I could spell it correctly. Okay. Um, I'm going to look for it right now. Trebuchet. I found it. Trebuchet. Man, that must be a French word or something. All right. Project Trebuchet. Let me see if my printer is uh, capable of printing that. All printers. I'm capable of printing it. Dude, I could legit print this. Check it out, everybody. I could print that, but we'll need like string, I guess, you know? Man, that, that is in depth. Yeah, we could print that. Let's see what else we got. So the, this is a more cat, another design of a catapult. Right, so I mean, we have observed that the springs are actually usable. Right, if we had like a little ball like that, we could do it. Yeah. Let me check out this. Yeah, we could, what's up vintage Nitro World? He goes sickening catapult. Yeah, the one I printed, I'll give you a closer look on it. I got to just adjust some of these bottom parts to, to fit a little better. But, like, check it out. The spring actually works. And that's like a built-in spring, you know? Not bad. For all single-piece material, technically. Printed from, like, a card. And good print quality, too. All right. Anyways, back to the Slayer gang. Got to start installing the engine mounts. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the engine on, on it first. And install the screws, all that stuff. All right, so I should have a bag of screws. You guys let me know if you could see okay. I'll uh, adjust the camera to, uh, to better suit your needs. Wasn't there a song, someone, I think it was Sublime. No, wasn't it Sublime? Something about better suit your needs. I think it was Sublime. All right, so here's all my screws. I should have the engine screws here. It's like the silver ones. I got to also uh, make sure the yellow ground wire is installed correctly. All right. K24 is answering some questions. I appreciate that, man. You know, uh, guys, if, if there's like questions here that I'm not answering, please like help, help, help the viewers out. You know, we all got to understand, and, and, and you know, we don't got any negative individuals here. Some of us know more than others, and that's fine. At one time, I knew nothing. And guess what? There's still people here that know more than me, and I'm perfectly happy with that. So someone just asked which engine this is. This is just a regular Dynamite 19. It's nothing that significant. It's, it's just like a direct uh, fit engine. I did put in a link to this engine. It's about 125 bucks. Now... It's a pretty good engine. You could run this in a Revo and a T-Max, but like in a in a Slayer, this would be very good. I would say for like a heavier truck, uh, it's subjective. All right, so I'll put in... I'm just hoping that this... Whoever trimmed this part over here on the throttle didn't mess it up. That's That's what I'm hoping. I might have to trim it more, actually. And, uh, you know, of course, I'm fumbling around right now because it's like during a video. It's usually always how it is. All right, so this part is not the correct part for, for this. It doesn't fit well. It fits, but not well. So I have two options. I could either use the throttle lever from... The 3.3 carb, which I threw somewhere now. Who the hell knew I was going to need a 3.3 carb? All right, so this person has... We ran into our first problem. Yeah, so we're going to have to pull. This doesn't This doesn't fit smoothly. I think this engine came out of a Revo. Because that has a unique mounting pattern. All right, let me see what we can do. Where's the carb I, I launched?
All right, I'm gonna have to get creative on this one, my dudes. All right, so this is the, the throttle arm for the Revo. I'm gonna see if they are swappable. Because basically what happens is the designs are a little bit different. It might not fit the three. So yeah, you see right here, this one is perfect. Like this one slides in really well. That's how it's supposed to be. It's very important that this is correct. I'm not sure if this is actually going to be the same design. Uh, anybody here know if this throttle arm is swappable or not? Yeah, it won't fit Monte Cristo goes. It doesn't look like it's the same design, actually. This one's also metal. All right, so I have a couple options. Yeah, it's not going to fit. I have a couple options. I could hold them up close like this and compare them and just trim the middle part. What do you guys think I should do? Trim the middle part? It literally needs to be thinner over here. I could just trim the middle part. Yeah, Tom goes, welcome back, TRX Carb. <laughs> nice fight. <laughs> You're pretty much right, bro. You can't kill the... T well, yeah, well, I guess you could. What I could do is probably just enlarge this part also. That's also an option. I could easily just drill this out a little bit. What do you guys think? Digital darkness goes, this thing looks mangled. So definitely this engine was installed in some other truck. And it was, yes, it was mangled. This is what happened. Uh, Lotus Full 20 goes drill it. So what do you guys think? Should I just drill this? I think that would be the easiest part. This is just a plastic component. If anything, I could easily replace it. And there's still a lot of space here left, uh, left to drill out and mess with. So it really shouldn't be an issue. I think I'm just going to expand this a little bit. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think I think that's gonna be the, the the way to go right now. It needs to slide, so we need to have a little more opening over there. The problem is my drill freaking broke. So this weekend I was out there trying to run the low CLST. My drill broke. I'm going to try to just see if I can just, uh, yeah, just fix this a little bit like that. Yeah, so basically what happened is my drill broke, and now I'm doing this. It seems to be working okay, actually. This is a file. Yeah, I could do a long screw. Good comment there from Jared Smithers. He goes, just run a long screw. All I need is a little bit. I don't need that much. So I could probably just do this. It'll be fine. This plastic seems to be coming fairly easy anyway. Sometimes simple solutions are, are fine. I literally need like maybe half a millimeter. All right, I think it should be fine. Let me once again just try this out now. The goal is to get this to slide better. I know this is like a real weird, weird uh, thing I'm doing right here, but whatever. All right. It's it's better. Yeah, it slides better, but it needs a little more. I mean, it's it's much better. It does fit now, right? It moves smoothly. I'm going to trim this out a little bit more. I just hope it's the right height. So even basic things like this, you run into freaking problems sometimes. But it's okay. It's no big deal. All right. Yeah, I could run like a bigger screw here to kind of separate these pieces a little bit. But it's a pretty good file, actually. It's not too bad. I think it's good. Yeah, it's 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 way better now. Yeah, it's it's way better. So this is gonna sit like this anyway. It's going to move this way. All right, I think it's I think it's okay. Are you guys good? Are we good or what? It's much better. 
So it might still be kind of bad, actually. We'll see if I need to replace this. But, you know, this is the best we got for now. So if it fits, it chips. Go skate 24, Steve. It's about right, man. Okay. Let me situate this. It should be fine. All right. The only other problem I foresee already having, this part could be at a different um, height. Okay. You guys see right here, I'm having a little bit of a hard time actually aligning it. So this is actually pulling down on the ball link, which really isn't... Nah, it's okay. It's still... It's in there. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty flat. Check that out. I mean, it's in there. All right, so let's uh, just... I'll see once I connect it all completely. You know, it's a little bit of trial and error, which is fine. All right. Yeah, it might bind, Jared Smithers, it might bind. I'll, I'll, I'll oil it up. As soon as I mount the engine, I'll know, you know. It's a little bit of a test. We'll see how it goes with the test fit, because, like, with what I have now, this is probably the only thing I can do. Because also, this bullying, the, the part itself, isn't really that long. So I don't have that much material here to kind of uh, mess with. You could see it just barely clears towards the end. Yeah, Jared Smithers, I, I see your comment. I'll, I'll try that maybe later. For now, I'll just do like a rough install. Just to kind of position it. All right, just to get it like secured a little bit. All right, thank you guys for joining me here on the Nitro Gang birthday live stream. I appreciate it. I'm not really a birthday person. Because let's face it, that's for women. But if it gives us a chance to talk about RC, I'll take it. Just want to see how far this extends. It'll work itself uh, in there anyway, so. All right. It found the hole. The other one I'm going to leave for the easy start. What's up, RC Cape Cod? So the other one, the other screw I can't really screw in yet. Because that is for the ground wire for the electric start. MGW, what's up? All right. Let's get the last screw on this side in. And that one will put in the electric start motor. It might not be good to begin with. We don't know. As long as the screws go in. I'm not, I'm not even 100% sure this is actually the correct motor mount. For this stuff. But it seems to be doing okay. Let me see if this opens or not. It might open. I hope it opens. If it doesn't open, we'll... We'll, we'll adjust. I could easily just take this off. Yeah, I see you guys are saying just like take it off and... um. I could easily just take this off. It's it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's a little bit tight. It's it's a little tight. It needs it needs more flexibility there. So basically, what happens is, the, based on the geometry, the way this moves, this is not the correct length of this throttle arm. So, I'll get um I'm I'm gonna take this off and just trim this down a little bit. That's a good idea. So now that I see the way it fits, guys, I, I see your comments before. What's up, Scott Ostensti? Otenti, what's up, man? Yeah, he goes, I'm not a birthday guy either, but happy birthday to a fellow Aries gang member. That's right, man. I appreciate that, exactly. I'm not really a birthday person, but I think now I'm at the point where, yeah, I need to take off the throttle arm. So we'll take it off, and um, you could easily just trim, trim the part. Of course, it's not that easy to take it off now because I have, like, slid in. No, but I could just twist it. It's it's okay. It's gonna come off anyway. It's no big deal. So you see, that's that's really the reason I wanted to just mount it in the first place. I could always just trim it when I take it off. Makes sense, to everybody. So yeah, somebody already did a hack job on this, and the reality is, let me see. 
Mighty Might goes maybe put a spacer under the bell crank. I, I thought about that. Let me just compare these two side by side. They don't look that different, really. All right, so I'm just going to trim this part. We don't need it to be that long. So the thing is, uh, if you put a spacer under this mechanism, it's not going to be very good. So there are obviously bushings here. This is a particular bolt. Um, if you put anything there where you change the, the height, basically if you change the height of this, this mechanism here, you're going to affect the rotation of the bolt because the bolt is kind of like those shock bolts they use. is pretty important. So I think the easiest thing I can do it's probably just trim this down to make it just more more round. It looks like someone's already tried to do that anyway. Are, are we in agreement, guys? I just want to know, are we in agreement? All right. Yeah. Hoser goes, you should be taking some shots on your birthday. You know what, Hoser? Maybe I will take one. I'm going to ask Melissa to bring something down for us. We might do a little bit of a shot. I'm not much of a drinker, guys. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with anything. I'm just I'm not much of a drinker. You know, we don't need to drink to have a good time. But on a birthday, we might as well do it. Melissa, go get me something, a, a glass of something, okay? Bring it down, and we're going to take a little shot. All right. What's up, big pizza? RC, let me trim this down a little bit. Yeah, so someone's already basically, like, hacked this up. I'm kind of doing, like, recovery work right now. All right, so this is basically a Dremel, like a rotary tool. Let's uh, let's do it here. Yeah. Pitbull Aircool goes, I am drinking. Melissa, go. Can you can you bring a can you bring a nitro game member or something, bro? Come on. Uh, RC Adventures wants me to put a new slayer. Um, you know what, man? I, I'll try to do it later. I kind of like was organizing and I hit it somewhere. Melissa, bring me a drink. All right. All right. It's a battery powered rotary tool. So I'll just try to. Even it out a little bit. I need glasses. What's up, Michael Knight? Yeah, I don't have a good vice grip right now, is what I'll tell you, too. Just need to even this out a little bit. I'm basically trying to even this out a little bit. It looks a little better. All right, guys, I'm going to go get something. Melissa's not bringing me nothing. But it looks a little bit cleaner, I think. I still think I need to narrow it down a little bit. All right, let me be right back. Gotta let this thing cool down, actually. All right, guys. Let me, uh, let me be right back. I gotta, go, I gotta go get something. Hold on.
All right, everybody. I brought a drink. Are you ready for the drink? Hold on, guys. Hold on. We brought a drink. Hold on. What do you think about that? All right. Are we going to do it? All right. Holds or goes, I just picked up a .28. Those are great engines. What's up, Texas Hill, man? Happy to see you here. Okay, so we got some, some vodka over here. Brand new. I'm going to open this up. Why do I have vodka? Am I affiliated with Putin? No! Just random, okay? It's just, it's just random, guys. All right? Just random. All right, I'm going to open this one up. I haven't actually ever opened this one. All right. All right. I'm going to do one shot. Uh, you know, I got to get through this stream, guys. I'm not trying to uh, encourage drinking over here or nothing like that. But this is some high-end vodka over here. Top three best-selling vodka in the world. Top three. All right. Now, before someone wants to go and give me some drama over this, just understand, it's just one drink, guys. It's just one drink. Calm down. All right. Oh, man, it comes with a glass. It's a, it's a vodka unboxing live right here. Who would have thought that would happen today, huh? All right. All right. Sickening. How much of this vodka do they think I'm going to drink? <laughs> they don't know. All right. All right, man, you guys egged me on over here. Normally, I don't, I don't really subscribe to peer pressure. But this is not peer pressure. This is, this is a celebration party, okay? I don't know what core means. All I know is it says vodka. Okay? All right. Chris, thank you, man. All right. I'm going to pour a little drink a roux over here. All right. God, it smells terrible. <laughs> okay. Then we'll continue with the, with, the, with the engine, okay? It's pretty good because I'm a little cold right now. All right. Pitbull Erico goes fancy. I drink seven times platinum. All right. This is, I don't know how many times platinum, but this is top three selling rated vodka. Um, don't know what that is, but it's, it's top, top rated. Okay. Apparently they say, okay. Why well, don't I do too much crazy? I think this is like basically a normal shot. It's like a big, big cup. All right. All right. You saw it. You saw it, everybody. All right. Cheers, everybody. Okay. Uh, when it's your birthday, happy birthday. When it's not your birthday, it's Nitro Gang Day. Timothy Cungus, man, how you doing? The special thank you for showing up here on Nitro Gang live stream. I appreciate it. Um, it was suggested I take a shot of vodka. I'm going to take a shot of vodka. There you go, okay? I'm all right. No wimps here, man. No wimps. Manny Guns, what's up, man? Thank you, Tara Curry. That's all we need. We don't need to drink too much. Okay, all right, here we go. Back to the Slayer, everybody. Man, I wonder how much that one was. I think I bought that one as a gift for somebody. <laughs> I gotta say, that, that vodka was honestly really, really smooth. The only other one I kind of liked, like, over the years, like, you know, this is back in, like, my school years, college years, was, like, uh, Sky Vodka. Sky was pretty good. I mean, compared to garbage, that is, you know? All right. Um, hoser goes, I got a 30, about a few minutes, I'll do like another half a shot, one shot, Melissa, call, call our friend Celeste, okay, call our friend, our friend just gave me a call, interrupted the live stream over here, all right, for real, I'll do one more and continue, guys, all right, gas 155, how you doing, goes? I need a shot, been sick all week, man. I hope you get better. All right, we're going to do one more, and we're going to continue because I don't want to keep moving the phone, so it's like too, too much work for me. What's up, artificial dopamine? And keep in mind, guys, I don't encourage heavy drinking. Uh, alcoholism is a bad disease. Gambling is a bad disease. But once in a while, it's totally, it's totally okay. And just don't go out and drive unless you're driving a nitro, okay? What do the rules say about drinking and driving a nitro? There are no rules. Okay, all right, we're gonna do one more here because I was there. All right, 
gotta say this this vodka is pretty smooth it's a pretty good amount okay <sighs> hoser one i'm gonna do it right now man <sighs> you contributing to the to the to the to the thing all right timothy congas thank you man i appreciate that all right one more and that's it guys i'm not i'm not gonna do this for like you know the, the rest of the show this is this is it okay I, I i promise most is gonna yell at me all right one time this russian told me how to drink vodka he said you gotta take the vodka in and then breathe out really heavy that's what he said he said you do that you could drink a lot Mm. Sickening. <clears throat> Man. Oh. That was worth it. Thank you for that channel donation from Hoser. I gotta tell you guys, that advice worked. That Russian dude gave me good advice. You take the shot, and then you kind of wait there, and then you just breathe out heavy. <sighs> Alright, I'm feeling pretty much, much better right now, okay? It's kind of cold here in New York, so I needed it. Alright, for real though. Let's continue. We don't want to be known as the as the Drinkers Anonymous channel over here. Uh, one drinking once in a while is okay. All right, guys. But for real, that's it. Melissa's going to yell at me, you know? All right. Although she likes to drink in herself. All right, so let me see how this carb is. Where did I put the carb? Alcohol is getting to me. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Damn. Got to act normal, okay? <laughs> Good act normal. All right, so I got the carb um, thing I trimmed. Let me just see if it slides in normally. No, nah, it needs a little more shaving. Yeah, this this part is, it needs more shaving. So I'm going to trim it a little more. It needs more shaving, but I'm pretty good, okay? You, everybody here won't know CM Punk? Oh, man, Hoser1 is trying to get, get, get the Nitro Gang drunk over here. If Melissa lets me do it, I'll take another shot. But she has to, like, approve it, you know? I don't want to do things um, just to do them. All right, let me do this a little bit more, and I, th I might take one more, okay? So let me just trim this, and we'll get down to business, guys. After all, the goal is to repair this nitro. Yeah. All right. Oh man, I think it's helping me concentrate. It's like the worst pliers ever. They have zero grip. It's like the world's worst pliers. And I've got them. All right, this is working. It's working. All right. I think we're good. I think we're good, guys. All right. Yeah, I think it's almost it's almost straight. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think taking the shots actually made me a better grinder. Guys, look at that. It's literally almost straight. I'm going to show you up close. Look at this part. It's almost straight now, right? Sickening. Okay. Depending how this goes, um, I might do one more, but that's it. Let me just check if it slides into the carb, into this hole better. All right. Yeah, much better. 
think we're gonna do a little more though. I think we gotta do it a little more. It's a little uneven at that bottom area. A little more. Oh, I got the supervisor, Melissa, over here looking at me right now. She's looking at me. She goes, if you take one more shot, you're sleeping on the other side of the bed. Why are you looking at me? Oh, Texas Hill, bro, thank you for that channel donation. I appreciate that, man. When it's your birthday, we'll all be there, too. All right? Hey, Melissa, why are you looking at a guy? I see you looking at me. All right. I'm doing fine. What? what, what there's no problem. What? Yeah, I know my nail looks bad. All right, anyways, it, it looks much better, my dudes. What do you think? I think it's good to go, right? I think it's good to go. All right, maybe one more when Melissa leaves because she's staring me down like a hawk right now. Yeah. No. Yeah. Nope. All right. All right, guys. I mean, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is going to work. It seems, it seems pretty normal now. I'm going to put it back in. Oh. Melissa, I'm Russian, okay? You understand? I hate both Russia and Ukraine. Okay. But. Okay, I'm Italian and Cuban. And do you see me drinking on my birthday? No. You could be. Did I drink no. Drinking is okay as long as you're not drinking and driving, okay? That's that's where bad stuff happens. All right. I'm going to put this back in, my, my guys. I'm going to put this back in. All right. I'll put this in. I'll center it, and maybe we'll do one shot, okay? All right, man. It's it's actually uh not bad at all. What? What did you say? All right. It's back in. I'm going to just uh turn in the set screw at this point. I think we've uh, we've got the carbon pretty good. Well, the carb carb throttle arm rather. I'm sorry, guys. Throttle arm. I mean, that's not the carb arm. All right. So the goal is to basically yeah, it 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 moves freely now. Literally no problem now. You see that? Yeah. I think it's fine. It's in there pretty deep. We all good with this repair or what? Let me make sure the carb actually opens all the way, because you never know. All right, so the carb, um, hmm, interesting. It doesn't open all the way. Let me take a look at this. It seems to be some kind of obstruction. The carb appears to be opening almost all the way. So what could that be? Hmm. If I can't open it all the way with my fingers, um, I'm thinking should probably swivel this a little, a little up. What do you guys think? Swivel this a little facing, pointing the far, the front. Yeah, adjust the carb angle. Okay, the carb angle is incorrect. All right, so we got to adjust the carb angle. Um, or should we adjust the throttle lever? I'm thinking right now. Maybe I should just adjust it a little more this way. Okay, I'm going to try that first, okay? I'm going to try that. Yeah, fiddle that with the arm. I'm going to try to adjust this a little bit more facing forward. Well, we'll see right away, basically. I could just, okay. So I've angled it a little more towards the front of the arm right there. Let's see now. I mean, it's not going to slide out or nothing. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely better. It's definitely better. But how come it's not going all the way? Maybe there's some kind of defect with the carb itself. Because it shouldn't be like that. Okay, you know what? I'll be able to, like, fix this. It's, it's better. It's better, but it's still, like, 20% not opening, it appears, when I'm doing it manually. It's possible that... Either the direction of this carb needs to change. Hmm. Hmm. Anybody got any ideas? It, it, it's not opening all the way as it should. I think the issue is this needs to be angled more 
um, this direction. I'm gonna angle it a little bit towards the carb. I mean towards, uh, I'm gonna angle it a little bit in the direction. Okay, this is moving, that's good. Okay, I can move the carb a little, hold on guys. Yeah, we're gonna try to tweak the linkage. I think I'm gonna move this a little closer facing to the engine. Okay, I've uh, angled it a little bit closer. Let me see what happens now. So now the carb is a little bit, you guys see that? It's a little bit on a diagonal. What's up, Bevan's racing? All right, it's better. It definitely has a better, I would say, a little bit of a better range of motion. Not significantly better, but it's a little better. Yeah, this, this whole linkage is not very good. Believe it or not. It has to do with the linkage. The linkage is not correct. All right, guys. I think I'm going to uh, just keep it like this for now. It's, it's almost open. It might open a little better when it's running. Well, it's probably not open better when it's running. I mean, it's almost open all the way. Grizzly RC, thank you, man. I appreciate you being here. All right, guys, I'm gonna offer up one more shot. What do you think? Should we, um, I'm not too happy with this carb linkage, to be honest with you. One more shot or what? One more shot, then we'll try to mount it. If anything, I, I could always adjust this later. It should be no big deal, really. Well, Melissa says no. Not too happy with this carb linkage. I gotta take a look at the way a regular 3.3 carb linkage is. That's a pro. I don't know what, uh, let's see, I'm thinking about it. We got Eric's RC, what's up, man? All right, what I'll do, I'm gonna install this. There's really not much I could do with this. I think we're gonna have to swap a throttle arm. There's something wrong with this uh, linkage, I think. I mean, it does seem to be reaching the bottom now. But it's all messed up. Oh man, Hoser1, he was influencing the Nitro Gang. All right, Hoser1, man, I'm gonna take one more, okay? And that's about it. I've been kind of like doing too much. I'm not, I'm not very proud of myself, but hey, listen, we're adults. We're adults and we're not driving, okay? So I'll do one for you, man. All right. Well, yeah, I'll do one for you. Let's, uh, let me show you right here. All right. We'll do one for you. Let me see. Let me show you guys what this is. I don't, I don't know what that is, but it's top three best selling in the world. Gluten free. All right, I'm gonna do one. I'm gonna do one right now. Romanian Rob, thank you, man, uh, for that. Happy birthday and every all of you guys, of course. I'm gonna do one more. It's pretty like I think this is a crystal shot glass. All right, but you know, all right. All right I think that's pretty much good. This is like a pretty big one. All right, let me let me show it to you so you know I'm not trolling you. All right, I'm not much of a drinker, guys. So if I I mean, I'm not gonna do nothing crazy. I'd never like black out or nothing like that. That like doesn't happen really. All right, everybody, I'm gonna show you right here. All right, all right, still looking normal, you know. All right, all right. Cheers, everyone. You know. Let's hope Trump pays the bond. Of course, he got no money to pay the bond. So how the hell is he gonna pay the bond? He gonna lose. All right. All right, we did it for the Trump election. All right, Trump election, guys. Guy's gonna lose. I mean, the bond at least. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. No more, no more influencing. All right, I'm uh, thinking. What is the reason 
this isn't the right angle. Let me compare these two. All right, so. So it looks totally normal to me. What's up, Earl Moorhead? Yes, that, that, that vodka was actually super smooth, man. I don't drink much, but as that commercial says, when I do, it's a special occasion, okay? And next time Earl Moorhead hits 100 miles per hour on the Mac Slash, I will take a shot for you too, man, okay? I promise. Just let me know ahead of time. Not, not today, because I already took too many. So don't, don't tell me today, man, please. Don't tell me. All right. Let's get back to the Slayer. I'm gonna install this engine. I think, oh yeah, what am I talking about? I need to build all this stuff. All right. I need to put in all of the, the hardware. So let's uh, flip the camera again and um, we're gonna install the hardware of the engine, the clutch belt, flywheel, all that stuff. All right. All right. So let me get down to business over here. We need to remove the flywheel nut, clutch nut. Sometimes it's referred to as as well. Damn, someone turned this on real crazy. Damn. I need a piston, lock, piston locking tool. I need a piston locking tool. Or I could just hold hold the, the crankshaft. Let me, let me see what I'll do. But ideally you need a piston locking tool at this point. This, this doesn't reach. Uh, let me get the proper hardware. Lucas Stalkup, you might be onto something, man. All right, here we go. Nah, damn. All of these tools. Damn, this don't fit either. Let me get the proper tool for this. tool okay guys check that out we got the piston locking tool and you thought you thought I wasn't prepared you thought I wasn't prepared come on I'm prepared all right so we got the piston locking tool need to build all of the clutch belt components on this engine we take off the glow plug yeah, Texas Hill, for those of you just joining us, uh, I want you guys to know this is the first generation Traxxas Slayer, the short chassis model. It's, it's actually quite rare. If you ever come across one of these with the silver chassis, this is not even anodized. It's just a silver chassis, not the blue one. Uh, that is the short chassis version of the Slayer. All right, Hoser, bro, see you soon. Um, you're going to Tijuana. I've been to Tijuana. I got to tell you, man, I had some of the best... I had some of the best tacos in Tijuana. I-565, don't worry, man. It's all right. Melissa, she's sensitive, you know? So, but for real, like some of the best tacos in uh, Tijuana. Of course, they also tried to steal my brother's car that back then. That was not very good. All right, so let's use the piston locking tool. Yeah, Mexico is fun, man. I really enjoy that. I, I love the Mexican culture. I love the food. I love the hospitality. Um, you know, crime, there's, there's crime everywhere. Let's get real, guys. There's crime everywhere. All right, so now that we have the piston locking tool installed, I can just remove this flywheel nut, sometimes also called the clutch nut. Oh, Mighty Mike goes, did I know there were different size Nitro Vs? You know what? I did not, so watch this. 
with the piston locking tool, I could easily do this. Turn it off. Sickening. I did not, but if you tell us the other one, I'll be very happy to know, because I, ha I have two Nitro Vs, man. All right, so, it's a Traxxas flywheel nut. That's good. Now we got to build the rest of these components. All right, let me get down to uh, the parts I need. It should all be in a bag. Yeah. Here we go. These are all the parts we should need. Oh. Romanian Rob wants to know, is that a platinum chassis? So, um, by platinum, do you mean like the model? Or th this is the first model of the 2008 Traxxas Nitro Slayer. They were always called Pro 4x4, but this is like the short chassis. So if you look at it from the top down, I'm going to show you just for you, man. Um, that was a great question. Uh, I didn't really spend too much time talking about the car. I should have. It has a much narrower suspension than the regular modern Pro 4x4. This is like the short chassis. Right? The newer versions, they have a lot of space between the shocks and the brakes. But back then, these were kind of like the short chassis, kind of like the T-Max. Uh, the 3.3 T-Max really changed, was, was a game changer. All right. So let's see what I got over here. I got a bunch of clutch belt components. So first thing we need to do, the collar's already on. That's good. We'll just use the flywheel. Man, this is the world's dirtiest flywheel. I got to clean it. Let me clean the flywheel a little, guys. Mr. Hannah, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm not really much of a birthday guy, but I figured the reason I wanted to do a birthday stream is because, like, people literally always ask me what the numbers in your username stand for. And 324 is my birth, March, uh, date, and month. Not necessarily the year. All right, so flywheel, Traxxas flywheel. All these parts are direct fit, by the way, with the collet. Okay, that's good. Next part, the flywheel nut. Now, it's not a bad idea to use thread lock here, but I'm not sure how long... Uh, how this will be so I'm just not I'm just gonna use it like this for now all right so at this point we need a the problem is this thing don't don't fit I normally use a glow plug tool to um, to secure it all right here we go yeah yeah here we go so with the with the piston stopper tool we could just turn it in and nothing bad's gonna happen I honestly like to kind of hold the flywheel when I'm when I'm doing this. All right, so I'll hold the flywheel like so. That's pretty good. Not bad to get some um, to get a pipe wrench. I'm gonna get a pipe wrench. I don't really like to rely on the piston stopping tool to do that. It could cause like a little score dark on there. So we'll get a pipe wrench. This is also not like the best pipe wrench. Well, guys, I appreciate you all being here. I'm going to be here for a little while longer. God, it's like the world's worst wrench. Who the hell designed this? Must have been Home Depot. All right. Because it legit doesn't even like turn. Got to get like a proper pipe wrench. Yeah, that's 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 not working. So let me just hold it my myself and in my hands. All right, it's fine. All right, I've turned it on. Everything is good here. All right, so we'll slide the clutch on. Um, whenever you're putting on the clutch, guys, not a bad idea to check the clutch spring. You know the way you can do that is pretty easy. Just try to take the clutch shoes apart like that. These ones seem to be, I would not say, not the loosest. Uh, they look okay. Yeah. JCL Castellan, what's up, goes, I use thread lock on the flywheel. I normally do too. In this case, I'm going to see how this mounts. If it fits okay, I might take this off and rebuild it a little bit better. I have a feeling that my uh, linkage here might not be ideal. So for now, I'm not going to use thread lock on this. All right. It doesn't matter which position you put the, fl the clutch bell on. I mean, the clutch on. It slides on pretty good. This one should be okay. It looks normal condition to me. Um, what does that look like to you guys? It looks it looks pretty normal to me. All 
All right, I'm just going to finish building this. And then I'll probably uh, hit it for the night, you know. As they say. Okay. All right, this looks pretty normal. Uh, Deontay H, what's up? Did you get my message? Uh, which which message are you referring to? Let me know. I'll uh, I'll 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 let you know. All right. So we need the clutch bell, the bearings. Okay. So these bearings look okay. I would say. Yeah, they they're pretty. Small. We clean the inside. Okay. So man, working on tracks or systems is pretty pretty easy. It all just it all just works. I'm thinking we need a. It's a little too tight. We need a washer. Um, we need a washer there on the bearing. Okay, so I run into a small roadblock. I don't have a washer. We need like a Teflon washer above the clutch nut. Corey goes, can I get a two-speed baby? You just got it, man. You know, I think there's going to be coming out a video this weekend where I'm going to be yelling two-speed baby real loud. So we need a, we need a, we need a, um, a washer. You know what I don't like? I just noticed something I don't particularly like. Right here, guys. The spring is really next to the pin. I don't like when the spring is next to the pin. This creates crazy stress on the area where the spring is joined. This is going to be a weak point. I think what I'm going to have to do is probably change the way the spring is sitting there. What do you guys think? Should I just let it go? You should not really ever have the spring. The spring uh, where it joins next to where the part opens, the sh where the two shoes open. That's a bad design. I'm going to have to reset the spring, I think. Whoever assembled the spring didn't do a good job. The spring should always be in the center of the clutch shoe. That's actually a top tip right there for you guys. So I'm going to have to reset it. Jordan Lynch, what's up, man? It was just bought a Dynamite 19. Where'd you get it? I hope A-Main, but probably not. But if you do, you know, please use my link. That would really help a brother out. All right, so anyways, I'm going to have to literally reset this. The spring is incorrect. That's going to cause premature failure. All right, so I'm going to redo this. You see that? Like whenever you're doing the spring, never do that. It's always actually very good when you put the spring onto the clutch shoe. You want to have it on the part that's like halfway already done. Right, like that. You know, my goal is always to have the opening of, well, where the clutch spring joins to be directly in the middle of another shoe. That way you don't have as much trust on that, okay? Yeah, so that, that should be okay. I'm going to try to slide in the new clutch shoe. Well, not, not new, but the other clutch shoe. It's going to be a tough part over here, actually. Well, good thing I took a couple shots. I got some alcohol energy right now. Ah, oh, God, this is tough. Okay, yeah, that's it. Done, guys. You see that? Final result. Clutch spring joins in the middle of the clutch shoe. That is perfect. All right, we got a question here from Deontay H. Let me answer Deontay H. While I'm not totally drunk, okay? Let me insert this right now. That's actually a top tip, guys. Doing this will prolong the life of your clutch spring. Never have the clutch spring in the opening. Got a good question from Deontay H. He goes, This is a message. Hey, hybrid. I have a Red Cat Earthquake 3.5 and the carb is starting to give me issues running with air leaks. Uh, I have new line, so it's probably the carb. So let me tell you this right now. On the Red Cat Earthquake, they have faulty carbs. Pretty much all their carbs are faulty. The only way I got around to getting my Earthquake to run normally was to put a Dynamite 28 carb on it. That was the only way. I know it's 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 weird. I'm thinking those Dynamite 28 carbs are like a cheaper version than the ones sold for, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, not Dynamite 28. The carbs for the SH21. They're like a cheaper version for the carbs sold on their regular SH line for Red Cat. 
The Red Cat ones are all bad. They're all bad. I had at least three or four videos on tuning the Red Cat Earthquake. They're all terrible. Uh, Deontay H, man. Click, like, one of the links in the description of this video. You should be able to get, like, a Dynamite 28 carb or really any SH 28 carb. They're all basically the same. I use, like, a Dynamite 28 carb, which, which technically is an SH 28 carb. You know? Um, next, I need the washer. Damn, where is the washer? I am missing the washer. Without the washer, I can't really fix this. Because the clutch belt sits too tight. I need to order the Traxxas Teflon washers. Let me let me go check the Traxxas Teflon washers on A-Main. Alright. I'm going to look in for Traxxas Teflon washers. Alright, here we go. Yeah, if you guys are looking for like really good washers to use with clutch belt components, this is this is what you need, by the way, okay? $2 for the Traxxas uh, Teflon washers. These are perfect for, well, the crankshaft size. Jordan Lynch goes, what's a good air filter for Dynamite 19? You know, honestly, the best air filter is the Traxxas air filter. That That is, what's up, Jason Brawley, man? How you doing? The best air filter is the Traxxas air filter. The one I have right here is just kind of like a placeholder for now, right? I, I made the foam myself. It's a HPI foam uh, filter. But the foam is like, you know, it's foam that I cut myself. I think this was on like the old Savages, this particular filter housing. Uh, Luke, how you doing, man? What is the event in Long Island? Tell me, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that event, man. Jason Broly, bro, always happy to see you here. Just to give you a little recap and everyone else here, this is the first generation short chassis, silver chassis, meaning Traxxas Slayer. Um, they're very rare. This one had a completely destroyed engine with a dead piston, dead sleeve. Everything was dead. And I just happened to have a Dynamite 19, but this one was used when I got it. So I spent a bit of time trying to get that uh, throttle linkage correct. And now I'm missing a Teflon washer. So I need a Teflon washer. Pretty bad. I can't really continue without a Teflon washer, guys. So I kind of ran into a little roadblock right now, to be honest with you. Uh, Deontay H. Bro, no, listen, man. Any questions you got, we're all good, you know? That's what we're here for. Uh, it's not just me working on stuff. I always like to help people out. Because at the end of the day, I remember when I first started out in RC, people helped me out. Okay, RR Tree goes catapult time. Where is the catapult? Oh, yeah, we got a 3D printed catapult, by the way, everybody. Uh, not even kidding. This is legit. A, a functional 3D printed catapult. You see that? Spring action. It works. Let's launch something. Um, so I just launched, like, what did I launch before? A, uh, a Traxxas Carb. Okay, we're going to launch a Traxxas Carb. Yeah, so this is a 3D printed catapult. I just got to trim these parts a little bit to fit. There's uh, actually 3D springs in here, 3D printed springs. These are all part of it. All right. So what I'll do, I'm going to draw the catapult. I'm going to put the Traxxas Carb on it. And we're going to launch it. So watch this. I'm going to hold it. And we're going to release. You ready? Boom! Hole in one, baby. Hole in one. Yeah, this is this is 3D printed. It came printed in a uh, like an entire plastic card. Kind of like, you know, you would print like uh, plastic parts for RCs. Pretty dope, I know, right? It's actually quite functional. I, I, I didn't think that the springs here would... Because they're printed from like cheap 3D filament plastic. I honestly didn't think the springs would have any sort of uh, springiness. But it actually does work. So check it out. Right? The spring is quite potent. Pretty sickening actually. Um, so that's it guys. Alright. I think um, we're going to have to call it a night now. I, I have reached a dead end. Um, 
I need to get some parts. I'm probably going to hit up my local hobby store tomorrow. The problem I'm having now, I, I need a Teflon washer right here on top of the clutch nut. Uh, because when I put the clutch bell on, it it doesn't it doesn't do well. Well, I guess it's okay now, maybe. Hmm, the weird part is, how come? Oh, yeah, this requires a screw. Okay, so I definitely need a clutch bell nut. Yeah, I need a clutch. I mean, it's 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 okay. I could probably assemble it like this. But I'm afraid it's going to rub against the flywheel. The tolerance heat is really, really close, and it definitely needs the washer. The washer needs to really be right there for the bearing to sit on so it could push it out a little bit. I don't know if I have a Teflon. Well, let, let me look for a Teflon washer right now. I might, I might have one, but I most likely do not have one. Let me look at my toolbox. I'll show you guys my toolbox right here. It's a couple of the washers I keep in this area. But I probably don't have any. Because I'm quite sure I used them all already. Man, the Traxxas Teflon washers are very, very useful parts. No, I don't I don't have one. Yeah, you really need those. They're they are very low friction. That's the thing. You need those washers. But for those of you that might have missed it, let me show you the piston that came out of the original engine from this truck, from the 3.3. This is the original piston. So yes, it has chunks missing. The connecting rod is broken. So that's kind of how I were doing an engine install. You know, got a good question here from Jordan Lynch. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for being a channel member and everyone, all of you here. Earl Boy goes, if only you could 3D print a washer. You know what? I could. I literally could. But the heat will not, it will not survive the heat. That's the only problem. Like uh, these 3D printed parts, this particular plastic is not really uh, temperature, high temp resistant, right? But like, yeah, it's a functional spring. Like, you know, that's a 3D printed spring right there. It actually works, which is kind of surprising. All right. So the question is how to break in an engine. Um, I mean, really what you're doing is heat cycles. That's really what you're doing. Every, every brand will have like a little bit of a unique break-in. Now, I recently did a break-in on a uh, LRP buggy. There in the manual, they recommend four tanks. They don't really say much else. Four tanks and then like a 15-minute cooldown. What I like to do is half a tank at like a little idle and then some throttle blips, right? You don't want to load it up with too much unburned oil. Um, you want it like a minute, do a couple throttle blips, clear the system out a little bit. So basically, you're looking for heat cycles, right? I don't really like to use really the term break-in. It's a little weird in my opinion. I like heat cycles. That That's a good term. Um, all right, guys. I think... That's going to do it for tonight. I ran into a little bit of a problem. Uh, I need the Traxxas Teflon washers. I'm going to go hit up my local hobby store tomorrow, guys. And uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow. I'm going to medieval times. Okay, you know where, like, there's horses? There's horses and, and like, food. They give you food, food and you got to eat it with your hands. So for my birthday tomorrow, you know, with a couple friends and stuff, we're going to go hit up medieval times. Um, the last time I was there, like, I was in high school. Okay, so it's going to be exciting. Okay, guys, uh, Barista Craig, what's going on, man? Uh, the, the stream is almost kind of over. It's a little late, you know. I took a couple shots. We worked on a little bit of a Traxxas. I hope, to you, I hope uh, you have a chance to rewatch some of it. All right, Romanian Rob, not by the Meadowlands in Lynnhurst, New Jersey. The closest one to me is Lynnhurst, New Jersey. Uh, there was a good coupon, but it still came out to like 100 bucks for two people, you know? It's sickening. With coupons, 100 bucks. Can you believe that shit, man? I can't even believe that shit, but it's okay. Uh, and I, I looked at their menu long ago. Medieval times used to have like ribs included. There were ribs. Now there's no ribs. It's just chicken. We're all going to be eating. We're going to be a bunch of soy boys soon, you know. All right, Benjamin Martinez, Barista Craig, Timothy Cunningham, Tara Curry, all of you guys. Special thanks. And listen, Sunday, there might be something special. There might be. I'm just going to let you know right now. There might be. The world's largest nitro engine ever installed in a nitro monster truck. 
Okay, so you're going to have to wait till then. I'm not sure, but it might be going down. All right, my dude, thank you all so much for today. I'll be back with you here tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a sickening video. Don't miss it. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm going to go edit it right now. Okay? And uh, my birthday is Sunday. It's not today. That's what the 324 in my channel stands for. See you all later. Okay?